Well, I'll try to make this fairly brief, and I'm going to include the video on this page I'm making here. And it's just something I, I think will help you uh, get a certain depth to reading about Gaetan Dugas, a little bit of background information, and uh, also an ethical consideration that is, was it really morally correct what Schiltz did in creating Gaetan Dugas? And then I'll follow up with a brief explanation of uh, some of the challenges in writing about Gaetan Dugas for this week. So let me go roughly in um, hopefully something like that order, okay? Um, one of the things with the journalistic code of ethics is that people are supposed to avoid making reenactments or staged news events. That is making their own movie out of real people. And if they do a reenactment, they, they have to label it. And what gets tricky here is that Randy Schultz has largely uh, interviewed everybody about whom he writes and, uh, and he sticks pretty close to the facts. And since there, most of them were living, um, they had a chance probably to sign off on what he did. But Gaten Dugas is an interesting ad for Schultz in a couple of ways. And, and I want to get a brief sense of what's going on with him. So, as I mentioned, since Schultz never met Gaten, um, he heard about him all along this patient O, this patient zero, and he begged to meet him, but he never did until 1986. He met friends of Gaetan's, but he never met Gaetan. So most of the portrayal is a work of fiction, fleshed out from very little hard information. And thus Gaetan is a major fictional character woven into a fact-based work of journalism. And because of that, you think whatever he's writing about Gaetan is true, when in fact, most of it is made up. And as I say, Gaetan is two parts fact to eight parts invention. The recipe will vary with each short section on Gaetan, but you get an idea, he's largely uh, made up. And so I want you, as I say, what's the point? As you read about Gaetan, ask yourself what parts Schultz could have known and what's party likely invented, invented largely to make Gaetan look like a villain. And so I have a link to an article here. And then uh, I also made a citation just for fun. And then I put the pages 174 to 6. And incidentally, that's why you have footnotes and uh, citations is that so somebody can go into whatever you're reading and follow up on the information. So this is actually a really cool article. I was reluctant to assign it, mostly because of its length, 34 pages, and also somewhat because of its style. It's somewhat academic. But yet, if you look 174 and 175, it's really kind of quite clear, or 174 to 176, it's pretty clear what goes on here talks about Schultz begging uh, for information on patient zero. Um, Schultz knew about the cluster study, which I think is on page 148. And he just really wanted to know. And it just happened. And I, I'm going to have to get the date there. Pardon me. Go back one. This is not easy here. But in 1986, in January, he was doing research in New York. He met Paul Popham somebody we're reading about now because he was part of the uh, gay men's health crisis in New York City. And Paul Popeman, Popham was dying at this time. He, re he knew Gaetan. He knew that Gaetan had a thing with, um, you know, his uh, good friend Jack Now, his former boyfriend who died of AIDS. And now Pau is, uh, uh, Popham is dying. And Schultz thinks in 1986, Paul, who had visible, visible lesions on his face, so he's got KS, was dying from a virus from this guy. So he thinks that I was seeing the legacy of this person and the virus. Schultz talks about it as the worst day I'll never forget. I discovered Gaten Dugas was patient zero, 
and was the person who brought the disease to the United States. So this is 1986. And of course, he thinks that Paul, who is dying, and Paul's friend, who died years ago, um, were people who were killed by Gaetan. And so that's his legacy. Uh, and along with being the person who, Schultz says, brought the virus into the United States. And the problem, they talk a little bit further here, I'm going to go on to the next page here, is that he had no information about Gaetan. Not much at all. But he certainly made quite a character, and they talk about how he, um, he had had the epidemic. The virus is kind of a shadow character, and he may have just recast the virus as Gaetan, giving it a face. The insidious virus becomes the insidious person. And people talk about how he's a typhoid Mary and this very evil person. And making all kinds of judgments of, off of somebody, about somebody he'd never met. So what we get, what's kind of interesting here is that Schultz also was in Vancouver. He met some of Gayton's friends. He spent a couple of days getting as much information as he could. This is 1986. And he promises not to use any of the things they told him about Gaetan. As they talked right here, Schultz promised uh, not to reveal Gaetan's name in any publication. And obviously he betrayed them. But this is where he gets his information. Two years after Gaetan died, and obviously it's kind of a thin sketch of information. So let me go into the book and show you what happens to that information. So you go roughly on pages, um, oh, let's see, um, 21. Yeah, roughly 21. Um, is that right? Uh, 21, you get Gaten saying, I'm the prettiest one. And, uh, you know, if you want to look at that, you're going to think he's very vain. And they're trying to get a, you know, treat him as this, somebody who's just in love with his looks. So if you want to look at it, if your terms are writing about Gaten, they have all this information, what he looks like, how fashionable he is. Um, and then they have him, a little bit of background. Clearly, this is the stuff, page 22, that the factual information. But then he goes on to stuff he wouldn't know. He returned from every stroll down Castro Street with a pocket full of matchbook covers and napkins. Okay, phone numbers. And then he creates a scene at uh, the Galleria, this sort of late night party party crowd where somebody gives him Gaten a big hug and the person said, who is that? His friend says, I don't know. He laughed, somebody. So Schultz wouldn't have known that. None of those friends six years later would have said, oh, I was with Gaten at the Galleria in San Francisco. None of those friends in Vancouver, Canada would have been there with him. So this is what he creates. He creates him as such a shallow person. And uh, who was that? Oh, somebody. He can't even remember how many people he's had sex with. It's a big, just a big happy joke for him. So this is journalistic recreation, reenactment. And Schultz doesn't know that Gaten is that kind of a person. How could he? He only talked to some of his friends and over the space of a day, six years later. So this is part of the reenactment. And then uh, this is part of the reenactment. He's got him on the dance floor with his poppers, strong and vital. Um, this is a reenactment. Uh, he wanted the purplish spot removed to satisfy his vanity. Schultz doesn't know what Gaten's thoughts are. We know he has Kaposi's sarcoma and purple spots in 1980, but we don't know what his thoughts are. And uh, we don't know if he's thinking of where he's going to have sex that night, but Schultz recreates him that way. And so in that space of a few pages, Schultz recreates a Gaten Dugas who's very vain, gives enough hints that he's got purple spots, so he's already infected with HIV and he has skin cancer, and all he can think about is where to have sex. 
And so I just want you to keep some of that in mind when you think about Gaten, that he's largely corrected, um, pardon me, largely created. And uh, I'll leave it at that. Um, I do want to go back to the original page here just to give you an idea of um, how this works. Is So I've got the, uh, the main idea is uh, the journalistic code of ethics, avoid misleading reenactments or stage news events. And that's what he's done. He's created his own movie about Gaetan, Dugas, and made him just very shallow, and all he wants is sex, 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 and he can't recall whomever it is he's had sex with. I should say, whomever it is with whom he has had sex, pardon me. And so I want you to look at that and just keep that in mind as you read him. And then as you read through Gaten, ask yourself what parts Schultz could have known and what parts he likely invented to make Gaten look like a villain. And right now, in that short passage we read, whatever that is, 21 to 22 or 3, um, he made Gaten into a very shallow, shallow, um, sex, sex, sex-driven man. And if you want to look at this article, I'd recommend it. You can link it. And a lot of what you'd want to have just to get a good feel for Gaten Dugas is on pages 174 to 176. So I think that'll give you kind of a good thoughtful background to, uh, to ask yourself um, what kind of a person Schultz created. Because even though it looks like fact in a work of journalism, it's pretty clear that it isn't. And a lot of it isn't and he had to make it up from whole cloth. So I hope this helps you get a little bit of a bearing on Gaten. I'm sorry it's 12 minutes, but um, I wish I could do it in three, but I think, I think this gets to the point and develops it well. So this will help you uh, get ready for what you present on Friday, I think.